welcome to Ministry of Justice. Lorna speaking. How may I help you? G'day, Lorna. How are you today? Hi. Good. How are you? Not too bad. Great. I'm, I'm hoping you can help me with a general inquiry. Sure. I'm trying to ascertain if anyone in New Zealand has ever been prosecuted for reading while driving. We need that request in writing. Oh, okay. I can do that. And don't forget, send a written request through to our court so we can investigate it for you and do a bit of searching. Yeah, cool. My email to UK Police. Greetings. My name is Mark. I live on New Zealand and have received in the post today some correspondence of concern which I believe falls under antisocial behaviour. Today my wife Lee received a letter post dated October the 14th, 2016 originating from Swidow Mail Centre. It was addressed to Lee, which is not my wife's name but is a common mistake. After opening it she was quite distressed and alarmed to find an insulting letter degrading myself and making claims against me in regards to a video I had posted on YouTube. He went further to state that he had sent copies of my video the Mike Bush, NZ Police Commissioner, Senior Constable Neil Winterbottom whom I have had previous matters with, and Senior Sergeant Steve Samuels of Mount Wellington Police Station. The man then stated that Neil Winterbottom had replied and that I could expect a visit from the police. He claims that I was committing an offence due to reading some notes while driving and talking to a GoPro dash cam, no different to anyone glancing at a map while driving I would think. He has selected these officers as they have had dealing with me in the past and has name dropped them in a vain attempt to intimidate me. In his final paragraph he wrote an insult and said the system is gonna get him for it, which my wife found particularly upsetting, this is unacceptable. Do you consider this to be an offence? Sending mail to my wife, not even me, to attempt to instill fear and distress to the recipient. I will be emailing Neil as I have his details as to ascertain if this man's claim of Neil replying to him is indeed true and of course to ask when I can expect Neil to trespass onto our private property without implied right to do so. Neil has been served notice of removal of implied right of access to our property. I am at a loss as to what to do, online I can block and report harassment, can UK police help me in this matter? The man's details are Simon Spaniard Hullbridge, Southern England I will attach a scan of the letter. I am truly shocked that this man went to these lengths I try to intimidate, distress and harass someone's family on New Zealand from the UK. Please help us. Mark and Lee Greetings Neil. It is no wish of mine to correspond with you unless necessary, however today my wife Lee received a disturbing letter in the post from a man in England who has claimed to have contacted you and that you have replied and are planning to visit. Attached is the letter addressed to my wife. Although incorrectly named. This letter is insulting and has caused distress to myself and family. I have contacted the South Ed Police in UK with regards to this man, however I wish to know if his claims of your reply to him are true. Note that at no time are you personally in any capacity welcome on our private property, any attempt to trespass without prior permission will result in prosecution due to the physical injuries you have caused myself which today remain you unanswered for. Warm regards and stay safe. Good morning. Thank you for your email. I have spoken with a local police constable and they have advised that you report this matter to your local police department. They have advised at this stage there are no offences in terms of this letter, however if you was to receive further letters then this could be deemed as harassment. If this was the case they would then advise you report to Essex Police. I hope the above is acceptable and assists you. Many thanks. Lauren. Kind regards. 
Lauren Boloati Social Behavior Caseworker South Ed on C Borough Council. Creating a better South Ed. My email to Ministry of Justice on November 17, 2016. On October 25, 2016, I called MOJ to ascertain whether any person within New Zealand has been prosecuted for driving while reading, Lauren at the time asked me to please ask in writing, hence this contact. Under Land Transport, Road User, Rule 2004, Section 7.3 It is illegal to use mobile phone that are not hands-free, but nothing is mentioned with regards to reading or referring to notes or paperwork. The road code under driver responsibilities specifies a list of things including reading map, noisy children, and various other things to minimize or avoid, however it does not appear an offense to do so. The NZ police website states one should not even talk to passengers, but again does not specify on the legality of such. To simplify, 1. Is it illegal or an offense to drive and refer to written notes? Or simply advised against? 2. Has any person been prosecuted for reading or referring to notes while driving? I look forward to your response. Warm regards Mark. The Ministry responds, November 29, 2016. Hi Mark. We don't have the information you are seeking, so I contacted police and they are able to respond. You will hear from them in due time, as this is likely to be treated as an official Information Act request, you can expect a response on or before 17 January 2016. I hope this helps. Kind regards. Sophie Warren advisor official correspondence and media team. Then the police acknowledged my questions on 29 November 2016. Dear Mr. Keane, on behalf of the commissioner, I acknowledge your request of November 17, 2016, transferred from the Ministry of Justice and received by police on November 29, 2016. You asked. Is it illegal or an offense to drive and refer to written notes? Or simply advised against? Has any person been prosecuted for reading or referring to notes while driving? Your request is being actioned and you will be responded to in accordance with the provisions of the Official Information Act 1982. Kind regards. Ali Sedgwick. Ministerial Services Advisor Ministerial Services, New Zealand Police. We respond on December 9th. Hi Ollie. We acknowledge your acknowledgement, but do not understand what provisions of the Official Information Act 1982, as we are not legally trained. Can you give a complete and meaningful explanation of this? As it has been now 10 day since your acknowledgement can you provide an approximate time frame as to when we can expect an answer to our questions? Warm regards. Mark. Mr. Markeen. Ali of NZ Police responds on 12 December. Hi Mark. Thank you for your email. The Official Information Act 1982, OIA, is legislation that allows individuals in New Zealand to request information held by various agencies including government departments and ministries, crown entities, district health boards, state-owned enterprises, tertiary education institutions, and school boards of trustees. The points of the Act you may find the most useful. The Act is designed to increase progressively the availability of official information to the people of New Zealand. Official information held by an agency refers to any documents, reports, memos, emails, manuals, minutes etc. and extends to non-written information, including audio and information known to a department but not written down. To be considered eligible to request such information, you must be a New Zealand citizen, be in New Zealand or represent a place of business in New Zealand. A request can be made in any form. A request may be refused pursuant to various sections of the Act, including but not limited to privacy, maintenance of the law, 
availability of information, and the scope of a request. To answer your question on time frame, all Official Information Act requests must be completed as soon as possible and not outside of 20 working days of receipt of request unless an organization has requested an extension, in which case a requester is notified. Your request has been sent for signing so you can expect the response today or tomorrow. For more information I suggest you have a read of the Ombudsman's page which summarizes the act or you can read the OIA itself here. I trust this helps. Kind regards, Ali. We respond 12 December with Good morning, Ali. Thank you very much. This was very helpful. Warm regards, Mark. Then later that day we get the response. Dear Mr. Keen, I have been asked to send you the attached response to your request of November 17, 2016. Kind regards. Ali Sedgwick. Here is the letter from Steve Greeley, which Mark will now read out. G'day people. Right, well, <clears throat> this is just to polish off the mega troll Simon Spaniard and his little driving and reading being illegal, motor offences, and the cops are coming to get me and all that sort of jazz. So, where we left off in part three, I finished speaking to Lauren, or I forget her name, very, very lovely lady that we spoke to at the Ministry of Justice in regards to traffic offences, along with a lot of other bullshit that I get on to talking about. Um, what she has suggested I did was put it in, in, in writing, of course. When you're dealing with a government department, you must always put things in writing. Two-dimensional entity can only deal with other bits of paper or written words. They don't deal with man, they deal with persons. I put it in writing form, um, in the form of an email to the Ministry of Justice. They didn't have the resources or the knowledge to answer the question and referred it as an Official Information Act request through to um, the police. Um, I got an acknowledgement from Ali at the police uh, stating that um, they would received it, you know, the old acknowledgement, we received a letter on such and such date, and I didn't hear from them within about 10 days, so I sent a little chase up, you know, can you give me an ETA as to when, and also can you explain what the Official Information Act meant, because I don't understand it. Um, I asked for a complete and meaningful explanation, which meant that she had to give me a complete and meaningful explanation, so she sent me a big email about what the Official Information Act request is. So after I, I looked at all that, um, at the bottom of the email she says, you know, ex you have to have an answer within 20 days of, the, uh, of them receiving the request. Um, and then later on that day I got an answer from a Superintendent Steve Greeley. Gee, really? National Manager of Road Policing, Superintendent, no less. So I guess that means he's one of the big dogs. Right, um, and it reads as follows. Dear Mr. Kane, I refer to your Official Information Act request of the 17th of November for information on reading while driving. Please note that the police has interpreted your request to be referring to reading materials within a vehicle rather than reading directional or information signs outside the vehicle. Now I'll just pause there. I mean, I'm asking, isn't it illegal or an offence to refer to written notes? Well, written means handwritten. You don't usually see them on road signs or information outside of the vehicle. Um, and then my second question, has been prosecuted for reading or referring to notes. So, both of those questions are pretty specific about being inside a vehicle and referring to notes, and yet they saw fit to tell me that they've interpreted that to mean not reading directional signs or information signs outside the vehicle. So I'm taking that as a little sarcastic, you know, just to make sure we're clear type point at the start. Um, then it continues. You requested, one, is it illegal or an offence to drive and refer to written notes, or simply advised against? There is, and his answer is the following. 
there is no specific offence for reading while driving. I'll repeat that, okay, just for Simon. There is no specific offence for reading while driving, okay? That was clear English, you should have been able to understand that one. However, now we get to howevers and the threats. However, an activity such as reading, which distracts a driver, or that would be for them to prove, from concentrating on a driver may result in a charge of careless driving. Keyword in that sentence is may. May being used in a directional sense, meaning may or may not. So that is just to instill fear. Better not do it, because you might end up getting done with the careless use. But of course, there would have to be an offence or an accident to be charged for careless use if you're doing something stupid in a car. Say if I was reading those notes while driving and didn't see the road and had to swerve and a cop saw that, they could do me for careless use because my actions brought their attention. Okay. However, like a courier driver or say a policeman referring to notes in their own inside the cab, not directional signs or anything, just in case Steve Gurley gets that misinterpreted. They too are just referring to notes like that while driving. Everybody does it. It's not illegal. End of story. So we answered that one with, with the whole no, there's no specific offence, so to Simon Spaniard. And then that um, the instilled fear part afterwards with the you may be done for careless use. Again, I would expect there to have had to be an incident for that charge to be brought upon. And a factor of the careless use may have been that the person was reading something at the time, glanced down at something. Their attentions were distracted for whatever reason. Could be turning around telling a kid off. Same thing could apply. You still get enough to deal with the careless use. But it's only a factor. It's not a, an offence in of itself to be sufficient. Do you get that? And my second question was, has any person been prosecuted for reading or referring to notes while driving? And his answer was the follows. As mentioned above, there is no specific offence of this nature. That's another way of saying it's not illegal. To answer your request, police would need to review every, not, not just a few, every careless driving charge and check the context behind each charge. In other words, it would be in the summary of pink or the, the summary notes of the officer when he's placing the charge at this time. Their statement of facts that, like Neil, doesn't bother signing or dating and get witnessed or anything, so it's, it doesn't matter what they put in those reports because they would then have to verify it by testifying on the stand if you put them to court. Therefore, your request is refused, pursuant to section 18F, in that the information cannot be made available without substantial collation of research or research. Well, I've done substantial collation and research to my satisfaction, and I'm happy to say it ain't fucking illegal. And your unsubstantial collation and research has already answered my question. So, yeah, you could be done for careless use, but in and of itself, that is not enough of a single factor to be done. That could cause something to happen. It's why it's advised against, as opposed to not just illegal. Okay, like talking to a child, lighting a cigarette, adjusting your ear con, all of those other wonderful things, the NCTA and the driver's code, under driver responsibilities, if you're a driver, that you've got to do. So, hopefully that will shut Simon Spaniard up. Um, no offence. I also just emailed this chat back and asked him for the, um, if he could please identify what the specific um, factors or uh, um, points are in a careless use charge. Here is our response to the letter emailed to Steve today. Greeting Steve. 
We thanks you for your letter dated December 12, 2016 in response to our questions. Although you have confirmed that there is no specific offense with regards to reading slash referring to notes while driving. You have stated that you would need to review every careless driving charge to check. You stated reading, which distracts a driver from concentrating on driving may result in a charge of careless driving. May. Or may not. You have refused to look for reference citing section 18, F, and have not provided evidence of this happening, along with confirming there is no offense for this action. As we did not ask about careless use offenses, we fail to understand the relevance of this. What are the elements or factors of a careless use offense? You have confirmed to us that driving while referring to written notes may be distracting and suggested as something to avoid, however we shall presume that it is not illegal and continue to do so should we require to. Many thanks for confirming it is not illegal as we are aware it is not unlawful. Note, we have been advised that NFW030, Neil Winterbottom has been in contact with a man in England with reference to a threatening letter which we received earlier this year. The author states that Neil Winterbottom of Warkworth Station had responded to this man threatening us, and would be calling around to our private property to visit. We have asked Neil to confirm this and he has ignored our attempts to confirm this. As Neil physically assaulted me with his police vehicle and then fled on November 21, 2014, he is not welcome on our private property, please see that he is aware of this as we do not wish to have any dealings with this wrongdoer, irrespective of his acting capacity. Should Neil attend our private property it will be considered aggravated trespass and reasonable force may be used if necessary to remove him. We will also supply the YouTube videos in relation to this matter. The letter is included in the videos. Note that all correspondence with relation to this or any other police matter will be posted on various forums for public purview. Warm regards. Mark. Mr. Keen. I attached links to the other three parts of Megatrolled here. Part 4, this correspondence along with correspondence to NZ and UK police to be posted very soon. Stay safe Steve. So, we'll see if he responds. If he doesn't, he doesn't. If he does, he does. Either way, I'm going to post up all of the police correspondence and emails that I sent to UK. Um, that might be in here as the final part. Thanks very much for watching. Um, Hope you have a great Christmas. Bye now.